Medico Expert is a global virtual hospital that provides surgical and medical intervention in India and also overseas. We have a network of more than 150 partnered hospitals that are JACI and NABH aggregated. We have access to more than 1500 super speciali specialists from 58 super specialities. We not only provide patients with the best of the treatment in India, but we also venture to deliver healthcare in the African subcontinents in the countries like Nigeria, Cameroon, Zambia, Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda, Ethiopia, etc. Having served more than 65,000 of the patients, we connect you with the right doctors, appropriate hospitals, and the best infrastructure for your specific requirement. Main offerings of medical experts includes, we arrange surgical and OPD camp, medical tourism, online video consultation, health checkups and wellness tool packages. We also collaborate with the corporate and the governments to reduce the healthcare spending. For any kind of queries, please contact us on plus nine seven six nine five one six two eight zero. Today, along with Dr. Mihir Bapat, we would be educating the people about various kind of spine surgeries. Medico expert with world-renowned spine surgeon Dr. Mihir Bapat is here for Facebook Live session to create an awareness about spine surgeries. Dr. Mihir Bapat is director at Nanavati Institute of Spine and is highly trained into ortho and spine surgeries, which includes minimal invasive spine surgeries, fracture and reconstruction surgeries, deformity surgeries, and correction surgeries. Please note for any kind of consultation, you can call us on 9769516280. We welcome Dr. Mihir Bapat on board. So, just to start with, we need to understand the speciality called spine. Yeah, um, actually, spine is the central pillar of the body, mm -hmm. and it's it's one of the most beautifully designed machines. It works 24 hours a day. The moment we step out of bed, the spine starts taking our own body weight, and the workload on the spine keeps increasing all throughout the day, and it's supported by very very strong muscles. So everyone has back pain because if we don't exercise and if we keep working, then the muscles tend to get weaker and the endurance of our spine keeps reducing with time. So what are the like common medical condition which one should understand that there is a spine issue? Yeah, so the commonest is like I just said previously, it's called as endurance pain. In common language, it is called as spondylosis or spondylitis. That means as we grow older, the muscles, the bones in the spine, that is the vertebrae, the discs, the nerves, all are going to get weaker. If we don't condition ourselves, that means if we don't spend some time in the gym or doing some form of exercise, then we are going to lose our strength and the ability to do work also goes down along with it. So aches, cramps, sprains are the commonest cause of spinal problems that all of us have. And so what are the set of investigations one should do to understand that really there is a spine issue because there are normal back pain also. So how to understand it's a normal back pain or it's a spine? Um, serious spine pain. Yeah, so to begin with, uh, let me tell you, 90% of all spinal pains are benign. They are just muscular pains because of mechanical overloading. We tend to sit at a desk for far too long. We tend to stand, we tend to stoop. And that is why the muscles get tired and we start cramping. So that's the commonest kind of pain which does not require any kind of investigation. If the pain, say, lingers on for more than a few weeks, where it keeps increasing or really becomes bothersome, then we need to do an x-ray to begin with. And if required, then we proceed to the other investigation. So when, when is the point when you know, we should concern a surgery for the spine is required? Surgery is only for pain that becomes disabling. That means I can't do even 10% or 20% of my previous activities. I can't stand, walk more than a few minutes. My legs start hurting, my hands start hurting. Then, then the issue is of nerve compression and that is the time the surgery comes into picture. And so what are the different kinds of spine surgeries? The commonest spine surgeries are called as minimally invasive or microscopic decompression. That means the pressure on the nerves is removed using a small incision with the help of tools like a microscope or an endoscope. And if required, that means if the spine is unstable, then we add a fixation to it using screws and rods. Okay. 
So, sir, you mean is it really to all kind of minimal spine surgeries are um, like, or, or there's a difference between spine sir, the robotic and the minimal spine surgery? So, uh, the difference is that the surgeries that were done, say, 10 years back, 15 years back, uh, were open surgeries where we had to take bigger incisions. That meant more time, more blood loss, more uh, uh, sort of recovery periods. The patients used to take often two or three months to go back to their normal activities. Now the same thing can be done through smaller incisions because the technology has advanced. We have the microscope, we have computerized navigations, we have uh, spinal robotics which aid us to put all these screws now. So uh, with these, the recovery periods are can be as short as one or two weeks. Great. So, sir, uh, like all these surgeries can be done through robotic or then you know, a specific kind of surgery that can be done through robotics? Uh, a spinal robot or a computerized navigation is just a device which helps us in a particular type of surgery where we need to put screws. So, uh, unlike the other uh, robots that are being used, the spinal robot does not aid in actually doing the surgery. The surgery is still done by surgeons. Okay. So it is only that the screws are aided by the robot. So you said screws are aided by the robot. So it means like all spinal cord surgeries use are used by done. Implants are used in all these surgeries? No. Only a portion of the uh, spinal surgeries we require to put implants. Uh, most of the surgeries are just decompressions. That means we don't put implants. Okay. And if in case the implant are you know applied, so uh, is it really necessary to remove the implant after the surgeries? Most of the times we don't remove the implants because that would mean one more surgery and one more trauma to the patient. So the implants are often kept inside for a lifetime. And there is no harm for the implants? These are biocompatible implants and they do not have, uh, you know, typical corrosions or other problems that are seen with other metals. Okay. So, sir, uh, when it comes to a word metal, crossing the, you know, the checking points at airport, the metals are detectors, is it a problem? Yes, all sorts of metals would be detected. So we do sort of give a certificate to the patient saying that he's undergone a spine surgery and he has metallic implants in the body. And sir, for the MRI, like, will the patient be able to do These are MRI compatible implants. So MRI is possible in all, all the patients now. Okay. So now if the surgery is done, like do the medication will be on for sure for some time. Yes, um, the maximum medication is only in the early post-operative period, that is about 10 days. After that, the medications are often completely switched off and a person may take an occasional painkiller if required. So these medicines usually, you know, um, the people who travel, of course, for you internationally and get it treated. So are these medicines are easily available in their own country or if they need to get it from India itself? Um, when it comes to supplements like calciums and vitamins, these are available everywhere. Uh, when it comes to painkillers, every country has its own norms. So the painkillers that would uh, be available in India may not be available across the counter in the US. So uh, the patients have to sort of look into this part. Uh, if they require a long term medication, then they'll have to sort of see which medications are available in their system so that they tell us and we can guide them. Okay. And so, like, uh, in fact, is there any side effect of these surgeries of these, like, what we'll be doing? Uh, surgery is aimed to remove a disability. That means unless it is absolutely required, nobody would undertake a surgery. So, a surgery means that the success rate of that procedure is now time proven. So, most patients would be benefited, but there's no procedure which is without complications. So, luckily the complication rates of any spinal procedure has now been reduced between 1 to 5 percent. So, the mo most complex surgeries would have about 5 percent. The simple ones would have 1 percent or less. And so, like how many days of stay is required in the hospital and in India for any, you know, huge, m common type of minimal invasive surgeries? Normally one to two days. In hospital? Yes. And in India? Uh, if, if someone has to travel abroad, normally the norm is that if they can get the wound looked at in their own country, say after seven or ten days, then we allow them to travel. Otherwise, then it's better to stay back for about five to seven days. 
Okay, so like, uh, will the patient be able to lead a normal life before the surgery he was leading? Oh yes, uh, that means that a, a micro discectomy or a micro decompression. Once that procedure is done, uh, for all practical purposes, a person is normal. So after a precautionary period of about say one and a half to two months, we allow patients to start their regular exercises. And then depending upon their muscle endurance, there are people who can run even a marathon now after a spinal surgical procedure. And so like um, we are, go of course, the patient would require a follow up consultation. So is it, uh, you know, they need to travel back or it can be done virtually like we are doing with Medico Ex at Medico Expert a virtual consultation with the doctors. So do you need only the extra report or uh, a physical consultation is required? No consultation is complete without physical examination. But uh, usually giving us a total detail of the clinical uh, sort of symptoms which the patient has and if that can be correlated with the MRI or the CT as per the requirement, then we would be able to at least give them an idea as to where they stand and what would be required. So now what about the follow-ups? Like you do the follow-ups online or with the x-ray and then... Normally, the follow-ups would be mainly x-rays at regular intervals for the first two years and uh, interacting with the patient on a, uh, a media where they tell us what their complaints are. So, though we don't have to physically examine them, we can guide them. Okay, great. So, so one little question what I have is like, you recommend more of, you know, robotic one or, or the invasive surgery? Like I said, uh, these are tools which are getting more and more important because they add precision to your surgery. Uh, they are not mandatory in all cases. So there is a section of patients who would require an open surgery, a formal open surgery, which cannot be done away with. That means that no matter what technology you have, they would still require an open surgery. So most of the cases where we can do minimum with the help of all these tools, we do that because it speeds up the recovery. And sir, like uh, uh, any age eligibility is there like for the surgery or it's just because on the basis of the pain and the condition? Yes, it, it, we have uh, uh, sort of kids as small as two years or three years who've had problems since birth uh, to our youngsters at about 85, 87 who have undergone these spinal surgeries. So there's no really age limit now. It's a question of how fit you are to undergo the surgery and what do you want? If you really want to be active, then yes, spine surgery can give you that activity. Sir, any sort of precautions that are, you know, mended for after the surgery uh, for, for, to, for the patient? Like I said, most of the precautions are for the first one and a half, two months when a person is recovering. But after that, once the pain goes away and the muscles get strong enough, then, then it's mainly exercise, diet control, weight reduction. So keeping fit in simple terms because that's all that is required for most panel pathologies. Thank you so much, sir. We were, it, had, it was a really interactive session. Would request you to just summarize the thing about the spine surgeries, about when should people understand the, that there's a pain. So just two lines for summarizing the spine surgery. So the spine follows a machine law. A machine can keep running. If you reduce the load, that means if your body weight remains in check, and if you service the machine, that means if you are into regular exercises. So you can avoid most of the spinal problems by just doing these two things. However, if there is a disabling pain that continues for more than two to three weeks, it's better to see a doctor. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, again. I would again uh, thanks all the uh, audience over the Facebook for, for attending this session. Once again, for any kind of consultation, please get back, get back to us on 9769-516-280. Thank you so much.